From the Panthers, we have head coach Paul Maurice to take your questions. Well, first, uh, an appropriate congratulations to Vegas. They were, they earned it. They earned it. They were outstanding, and uh, we didn't have an answer for them. So, to Bruce Cassidy and Mark Stone and the, the whole group, well done. We'll now take questions. Front left. Uh, James Sonal, SportingPanthers.com. Coach, we've heard you talk so many times about this whole run about guys getting to keep certain things, games, moments, things like that. Looking at the whole group, obviously, this feels much more like the beginning for a lot of these guys. What do you hope they keep from these last two months or so? Hmm. What it can be like. And, and I don't mean in terms of winning the Stanley Cup, but what a room can be like. What a work environment can be like when you find that the special, special group of guys. I, 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 to describe the relationship, I would say they, they just love each other. Like truly care about each other and connect with each other and Lord knows play through things with each other. Um, remember the feeling. It's not the moments necessarily on the ice, the goals. As a matter of fact, I don't think that's what it is at all with these guys. It was, they just care about each other. They just loved each other, treat each other like so well, so respectfully well, have fun with it, work their butts off every day. But it was truly a special year. I, I don't think that I can describe it to you very well. You have to, and I'm more of an observer to all of it than a participant in it. To sit back and watch them, it's been it's been spectacular. It's it's I don't know what the right words are for it, but kind of all the good things in this game actually aren't the game, right? Like the hockey's great, we love the sport, but the best it can be is in a room like that. It was a brilliant year. Front left, Ryan Clark, ESPN, Paul. Definitely, it's emotional moment at the moment. But when it came to you, the decision about Matthew, what was sort of the process about deciding to keep him out? And also, what was it? Because it's reportedly a, a sternum issue that was the problem. So what was sort of the thought process with all of it? Yeah, he fractured it. That was a bit of a problem. <laughs> and he came back and scored the goal. You know, um, he's I don't know, one of four guys with broken bones. So. To play him in the next night, and again, he had scored the goal after, after I'm not sure, it's his collarbone, sternum, clavicle, SI joint is, I think, the words that I heard, but um, he'll heal fine from it. Um, he got into the next game, and because he is so smart, he can find a way around the ice. He can find it. I think he had three of our best chances to score in that game, but he couldn't do the things that he can do to finish. But the the next day after the full game that he played off it, he was, I mean, he, he didn't dress himself for the game. Somebody helped him get his gear on. Somebody tied his skates. Somebody put a sweater on for him. Uh, but the next day when he came in, he was in significant pain. So there wasn't really a question on whether he'd be able to play or not. The idea would be if we could let it calm, we might be able to get him to game seven. Right side, front row. Uh Paul, just, um, you know, it, it just felt like not only Matthew, but you had a lot of guys banged up. And I know you don't want to make excuses. I'm sure Vegas was banged up too. But, but depth-wise, just how, how tough did it become for you guys to sort of absorb that? Well, we're, we're swinging out of our, our weight class in the playoffs, right? We, we hit four teams at 110 points plus, one at 135. But, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll share one with you. Aaron Neckblad broke his foot in the Boston series. He popped his shoulder out twice, passed a concussion cane, test, tore his oblique, then went up the ice the other night and drove the puck into the offense. There's only, we tied the game and he scored tonight. So, I don't know, we have four broken bones. We've got three shoulders that are going to have to get taken care of. We've got oblique tears. It's not an excuse. So don't even, we, we don't need one. These guys earned the right. They gave everything they had. You know. Right side. We're in, the, we're in the Toronto series, and 
at game three. Kind of the idea was they had shut down the Bennett to Chuck line. Well, <laughs> Sam had hurt himself so bad. Walk into the, he was on a second injury at that point, and walk into the room after game four that we lost. He could barely take his shoulder pads off, right? And I'm, I'm standing in the room going, should I help him? Like, how would he feel about that if I walked over? And But he rebounded and continued to play. I mean, that part of it is you know, Radko Gudish is a high ankle sprain. That's a six-week. He took a period off, right? So there was, everybody's got injuries. I've never seen guys play with what these guys play with and the sheer number of them. Um, you need luck, for sure. We didn't need necessarily puck luck. I think I think if you get to the final, both teams have had their fair shares of bounces. But we ran out of the health luck, and we needed to. If we're going to swing above 110-point teams, do you need your bodies? Take a few more on the right side, second row. You, you've been around the NHL a long time, obviously. Do you search? You've had some great teams, great years. Do you search for a season or a, a room like this? Oh, I would be very respectful. Um, you know, I, I mean, what's the truth? In the first 17 or 18 years in the league, we were considerably underdog teams. You know, making the playoffs was us punching over our weight class, but I've never, ever in my life had a year like this. Like, these guys, like, you know, I say, well, the coach made it fun. I didn't make it fun at all for these guys. They made it fun for me and for our staff, truly. Beat the hell out of them in training camp. Did it again in January when things weren't going well. And they just wouldn't break. They wouldn't break. And, and I don't think they ever did. Like, uh, I get it. I don't really want to talk about the details of the game, but eh, with everything, they still come out and play as hard as they can in the third. Right, they're just an honest bunch of fun guys. It was profession affirming. Over, you, you, there is cynicism that creeps into you over time, right? And then you walk into a room like this, and then you love hockey players again. They're just the greatest bunch of guys. And I, you know what? Uh, you know, Bill, Bill Zito. I mean, he made the playoffs. Won a President's Trophy and then won, it, won the Eastern Conference in his first three years. He built all of it, right? All of the people that are here are his, his decision. So he deserves some credit. It, it was a whole hell of a... I mean, this is as, as, as the top four or five bad days of your life. He loses in the Stanley Cup for sure. But even now, standing here, like, I love those guys. They, they, they gave me a great year of, of my life, right? At 56, you're going on. Oh, I don't have 40 left, I don't think, based on based on the way I look right now. Um, it was a wonderful gift from those players, those men, to, to the coaching staff. We really, truly enjoyed our, our lives this year. It was nice. Take two more questions, left side, second row. Tommy Liddy, NHL.com. Ekblad talked about it, Reinhardt talked about it. What they learned during this was more than they had learned in years. What's the value of the lessons, I guess, that they going forward? With you what never, they ever have to explain the hard again. Right? You never have to convince them of something, how hard this is, how hard you have to play, or that you're, you're not out of it, down 3-1 to Boston. You're, you're never out of a game. You're never out of it. But, but it's incredibly hard. So we've got a short summer. When they train, they'll understand, right? When they get pushed in training camp next year, they'll understand. For a player like Anton Lundell, some things, well, I'll give you a line, kind of personal. My mom always said, you'll never know how much you can love somebody until you have a kid. I thought, yeah, mom, what are you talking about? Right? There are things you can't know until you experience it. And, and how hard the playoffs is and how how hard it is to get to where we got to. You can't know it until you experience it. Last question, front left. Uh, David Wilson, Miami Herald. I guess kind of following up on that, I think 15 of the 20 guys who dressed for you are, are guys under contract. And obviously the team could change with trades or whatever, yep. but you've talked so much about how much you like this group. And is there just, obviously not yet, but like 
I'm sure in the next couple of days, the enthusiasm to get back at it and get yeah. another shot at this will, will come pretty quickly, I would guess. Hmm. We're going to have a hell of a time making the playoffs next year. <laughs> That's a fact. Because it's hard. Because good teams miss. And if you come in feeling better about yourself because you've got to play two months longer, you're in trouble. So as soon as you learn to love the hard, we're going to have some players in that locker room that are beyond our roster, but they will not be in an opening night lineup. And we're probably talking two or three months. I, I got some guys that are going to take four to six months to heal. They are going to have surgery. So we are going to look different at the start. Um, think of what Colorado went through this year. With that, we're going to have some of that going on. So I won't. I'm not giving them that speech tonight. We'll get it in mid-July. Thank you. For Thank you for everything. Safe travels. Thanks,